OK, hi, here we are. I'm coming to you on uh, Microsoft Teams this time, as opposed to Camtasia. Your other, um, your other videos have been made on Camtasia. You tell me what you think of this recording. We're going to factor quadratic trinomials. These are called quadratic because the highest power is two. Anytime you have a polynomial and the highest power is two, it's called quadratic. <clears throat> Anytime you have three terms, it's called a trinomial. The formula for a quadratic trinomial is up here. Right there. AX squared plus BX plus C. A is the number in front of the X squared, the leading coefficient. B is the coefficient of the X to the one power term, the linear term. And C is the constant. Well, here I want you to notice that all of the A numbers are one. Well, that makes life easy, as you'll notice. All you have to do when the leading coefficient is one and you've got a quad quadratic trinomial is look at the constant. The constant right there. And what you need to do is factor it. 24 equals 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and four times six. And then you start again, six times four, eight times three. Also, since 24 is a positive number, it's going to equal negative one times negative 24. Negative two times negative 12. All this is important, yes. Negative three times negative eight, negative four times negative six. These are the uh, integer factors of the number 24, positive 24. What we have to do is find one of these sets of factors that adds up to the B number, positive 11. And so, three and eight. Three plus eight equals 11. We're almost done. W squared plus 11W plus 24 will factor into 2 linear binomials, W and W, plus 3 plus 8. That's all there is to it. Then you can check yourself by multiplying W times W plus eight plus three times W plus eight. This is the W that goes here. This is the plus three right there. And then that'll be W squared plus 8W 
plus 3w plus 24. And when I combine my like terms, that will be w squared plus 11w plus 24. Which is exactly what we started with. A linear factor right here. Let's write the linear factors right here. In fact, let's pretend we've got an answer box. And this is what you would write in the answer box. Parentheses W plus three, close parentheses, open parentheses, W plus eight. Because the W's are both raised to the power one, an invisible one, these are called linear factors. And in fact, each of these is a binomial because there are two terms in each set of parentheses. So these are each linear binomials, linear binomial factors. Now, let's do the next problem. 1v squared plus 8v minus 20. Let's write down what a, b, and c are. a is 1. b is 8. c is negative 20. Because A equals 1, all we have to do is factor negative 20. Negative 20 equals 1 times negative 20, 2 times negative 10, 3, no, it won't go evenly, 4 will though, 4 times negative 5, or the other way around, negative one times positive 20, negative two times positive 10, negative four times positive five. Negative numbers always equal a positive number times a negative number. All right, I have to ask myself self, which one of these factors will add up to positive 8? How about negative 2 and positive 10? Negative 2 plus positive 10 equals positive 8. So I'll come over here and I'll make two sets of parentheses. V v minus 2 plus 10. And now if we check ourselves, let's check just to make sure. We'll take this v times the second set of parentheses and the minus 2 times the second set of parentheses. And that's going to be V squared plus 10 V minus 2 V minus 20. Combine your like terms. You'll have V squared plus 8 V minus 20. And that is exactly what that's exactly what we started out with. So our answer is V minus 2. I didn't mean to leave that blue, but oh well. V plus 10. Those are the factors of the 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 um, integer binomial factors.
or the linear binomial factors. Yeah, the, the linear binomial factors of V squared plus 8V minus 20 right there. Oh, now check this out. A is five. Oh dear. Oh dear, I don't want to leave that blue. A is five. B is negative 20. C is negative 225. What are we going to do? You know what I forgot? I forgot to check for a common factor. Look at this. This is five times y times y minus four times five times y minus five times for the calculator. 225 divided by 5. It's 45. Okay, so minus 5. I'd rather say minus 45. Minus 45 times 5. Now, I could look at 225 and see immediately that 5 will go into 225 because the last number is five. And over here, 20. I know that 20 is four times five, but besides that, whenever a number ends in zero, five goes evenly into it. So if I had been looking for it, I would have seen <clears throat> that five is a factor of each of these three terms. And I would never have bothered to write this. Instead, I would have factored this as five times the leftovers, y squared minus four y minus 45. So what you may be asking me? Check out y squared minus 4y minus 45. Here, a is 1. b is negative 4. And c is negative 45. I can factor this easily just by factoring negative 45. Negative 45 equals 1 times negative 45. 2, no, won't go evenly. 3, yes. 3 times negative 15, not 4, but 5 times negative 9. And are there more? Might be it. 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 times negative five, so it starts again, it turns around again. Let's go ahead and do this. Negative one times 45, negative three times 15, and negative five times nine. Remember, you have a calculator. No problem. You can do this on your calculator. All right, now. We need to find the two numbers that add up to negative four, the B number, right there, right here. The B number, 
which of these factors is going to add up to the B number. Five plus negative nine equals negative four. There you go. So we're going to have five. You can't just throw your five away. Times. Y, Y, plus five, minus nine. Now, let's check. I always wait with the five and instead I say, well, with brackets, y times y minus 9 plus 5, this plus 5 right there, times y minus 9 so 5 times y squared minus 9y plus 5y minus 45. Don't bring in the, don't distribute in the five yet, just wait. Y squared, because I need to combine these like terms, that will be minus four Y minus 45. Now I distribute the five. Five times Y squared is five Y squared. 5 times minus 4y is minus 20y. And 5 times minus 45 is minus, <coughs> excuse me, 225. And that's exactly what we started out with. So we can be happy. Moving along. Here once again we have a common factor for, I'm on the lookout for it. Okay, 20 R squared equals four times five times R times R minus four times 12 minus four times 11 R. We'll look at that. They switched terms on us. Let's put everything back where it belongs. Four times five times R times R minus four times 11 R minus four times 12. Each one of these terms contains a four. So four is our GCF. Four times five R squared minus 11 R minus 12. And A is not one. Even given that the four has been pulled out, we don't have another GCF in there. So in here, our A is five, our B is negative 11, and our C is negative 12 we're going to have to use the AC method. When your leading coefficient is one and you have a quadratic trinomial, 
you can use the method we used up here. It's quick and easy. When nothing you do can make A equal one, you have to use a different method called the AC method. Why is it called the AC method? Because our step number one, after we factored out any common factor, is to multiply A times C. I'm not looking forward to this. Ah, <sighs> all right. A times C. That's step one. Actually, I suppose step one is to factor out a GCF if there is one. Step two is to multiply. A times C, which will be 5 times negative 12, which is negative 60. Well, we have to do something with it, right? Otherwise, I wouldn't be going to this trouble. Step 3. Just like I took the constant C and factored it up here, I'm going to take A times C and factor that. Step three is negative 60 equals one times 60 2 times 30, no, oh, oh, negative, negative. Positive 1 times negative 60, positive 2 times negative 30, positive 3 times negative 20, positive 4 times negative 15, positive 5 times negative 12, positive 6 times negative 10, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then they turn around. So negative 1 times positive 60, negative 2 times positive 30, and that's a negative there. Negative 3 times positive 20, negative 4, times positive 15, negative 5, times positive 12, and negative 6, times positive 10. Here are the factors of negative 60, which is our AC, A times C. Now, step four. Find the factors of negative 60 or I should say the factor set, I suppose, of negative 60 that adds up to B, the B number. What is B? B equals negative 11. Okay. Well, this one, four and negative 15. Four times negative 15 is negative 60. 
4 plus negative 15 is negative 11. And negative 11 is B. What this does is it gives us two numbers and we're going to do something different with it than we did before. I'm going to rewrite four parentheses, 5r squared minus 11r minus 12 this way, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Step five. We're looking to factor four parentheses, five R squared minus fifteen R plus four R minus twelve. This is negative 15 and this is four. And I turn them just that way because of what I'm gonna have to do in the next, next step. You'll see why. Remember, as long as you're adding, this is really plus negative 15R and plus negative 12. Always remember your invisible plus signs. When you're adding, order doesn't matter, so it doesn't matter if I put my negative 15 here and my 4 here or my 4 here and negative 15 there. It doesn't matter. So I do what's convenient. Excuse me. OK, here we go. Now, why did I do that? because when you're factoring by grouping, remember factoring by grouping, you have to have four terms. You put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms. That's what I have to do. So here we go, step six. Here's my four. Now I'm going to be putting parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms. So I'm going to put brackets around these guys. Because remember, four was pulled out to the front of all of them as a GCF of all the terms. So we're going to have, actually I would, I want to do it in blue, so. Bleh. The first thing I'm going to do. Is just write 4 R squared minus 15 R plus 4 R minus 12. And use my blue marker to put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the second two terms. Now, now we're just, this is, yeah, I guess step seven. Step seven is factor by grouping, which you've already done and which we're gonna do a bunch more. Okay. So we're gonna have four bracket. Both of these terms has a five in it and both of these terms has an R in it. So 5R is going to be my GCF, and the leftovers are going to be R, B, 
because 5r times r is 5r squared, and minus 3, because 5r times minus 3 is minus 15r. Plus, both of these terms right here, both of these terms contain an r. 12 is 4 times 3. So 4 parentheses, the leftovers are r minus 3. And I'll close my paren and close my bracket. Scroll up so we can see. And I'm going to take a drink of coffee. Cheers. Okay, now. Four bracket. If I look at this term, because everything is multiplied, 5r times this set of parentheses, r and minus 3 are grouped into one thing by the parentheses. And then 4 times r minus 3 is another term. Both of these terms separated by a plus sign, both of these terms contain r minus 3. That is going to be the uh, GCF of what's in the brackets. So I write it down like this. I could write it in blue. R minus three times the leftovers five R plus. <laughs> That's what happens when you think ahead of yourself. Doggone it. Oh, no wonder. Good grief. Look at this. Come on now. There. I've got the eraser all the way all the way up to size 64. Duh. No wonder everything's getting erased. OK. Here we go again. The leftovers are 5R plus 4. Now we don't need the brackets any longer. So our answer in the blue answer box is four times R minus three times five R plus four. Now this is completely factored, broken down into the very basic components of 20R squared minus 48 minus 44R, which was written in the wrong order, but yeah, oh well. This is called the AC method. Okay. Here we have another one. Step one. Pull out a GCF from 24A squared minus 38A plus eight. <clears throat> I was thinking it would be four again. Because four goes into 24, and four goes into eight, but guess what? Four does not go into 38. Four goes into 32, four goes into 36, four goes into 40, 
4 does not go into 38 or negative 38. So I fear that 2, 2, 2 is going to be our GCF. Let's see, 2 times 12 times a squared minus 2 times 19 times a plus 4 times 2. Yep, because 19 won't break down into another 2. Um, oh, more's the pity, right? So, 2 parentheses, 12a squared minus 19a plus 4. And a way you can check yourself is to say, hmm, okay, 2 times 12 times a squared. Yes, that's 24a squared. 2 times minus 19a, that's minus 38a. And 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, that's correct so far. This was step one. Step two. Multiply A times C. A times C equals, well, let's write down what it is first. We're not counting that two, we can't lose it. But now we need to factor this quadratic trinomial in here. And forget the A, A is talking about that number or the leading coefficient, which now is a 12. It's not talking about the variable A. Um, so we're going to take 12 times 4. Which is 48. And step 3, we're going to factor 48. Forty-eight. Got a cat doing something strange. What's going on down there? Okay. Somebody doesn't want to let their little foster brother in. Forty-eight. One times forty-eight. Well, all right, we'll do it this way. Let's write all of them just so you can be getting the idea. 2, two times 24, 3 times 16. Yeah, 3 times 16, 4 times 12. Five won't go. Six. Oh dear. That's not your little brother, sweetheart. Who said? That? That's not his meow. Excuse me. I think we have a war about to start. Neighbor cat. Neighbor cat who enjoys to come o coming over and trying to fight with my male kitten. Who's almost a grown up cat. You understand it's a hormone thing. I understand, but why invite trouble? Where were we? Let's see, six into 48. Um, great. Seven. That'd be 42. Eight. Oh, eight. Duh. Six times eight. 
sometimes it takes a while. All right, and then it turns around again. We're going to do now negative 1 times negative 48, negative 2 times negative 24, negative 3 times negative 16, negative 4 times negative 12, negative 6 times negative 8. And we need, where here A is 12, B is negative 19. We need to find the pair of numbers that adds up to negative 19. There we go, step four. Pair that adds up to negative 19. Hmm, negative 19. Negative three times negative 16, negative three plus negative 16. All right, negative three times negative 16, is 48. Negative 3 plus negative 16 is negative 19. OK, those are going to be our, our middle numbers. Negative 3 and negative 16. So step 5, rewrite our quadratic trinomial as a quadratic polynomial with four terms. All right, so we are going to have 12a squared plus four. Now I am exaggerating that. Um, minus three a minus 16a, and we could move that over. Now see, we still have our negative 19a because these guys, negative 3a minus 16a, is negative 19a. So I have not changed the numerical value. I've just changed the form. Now, I put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the second two terms, and there has to be a plus sign in the middle. There. Now, both of these terms contain a three and an A. That'll be 4a minus 1. 3a times 4a is 12a squared. 3a times minus 1 is minus 3a. Plus, this one, yeah, is going to be a little tougher. Why? Because, how's that for an answer? Because the leading coefficient is negative, so the GCF has to be negative. Meanwhile, I know that four goes into 16, so the GCF would normally be four, but now it's gotta be negative four. So let's rewrite this. Negative four times four A plus one not negative, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. Negative times negative is positive. So, plus negative one times negative four. 
negative one times negative four is positive four. Okay. So I'll go ahead and go to one more line. Negative four is the GCF over here. And the leftovers are four A plus negative one or minus one. But, but look what I forgot to do, and that could have cost me the whole ball game right there. Oh, I didn't. Never mind. Forget I said anything. Don't forget I said anything because I want you to notice that I'm in danger of getting the wrong answer. Why? Because I left my two over here. I was about to forget it. So, two. 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 Don't let that happen to you. So we're going to have two. In here, you've got a 4a minus one and a 4a minus one. It now is the GCF. And the leftovers are 3a plus a negative 4, which is minus 4. Okay, and once you have everything in parentheses there, you don't really need the bracket anymore, but you do up until this step right here. Now, we actually have enough room, I think. Yeah, we have enough room to check our answer. Two times four A minus one times three A minus four. Two. Bracket. Four a times 3a minus 4 minus 1 times 3a minus 4 parentheses closed bracket closed i need the bracket because this 2 multiplies the is going to end up having to multiply all of our terms that's a good way to say it Twelve A squared four A times three A is twelve A squared four A times minus four is minus sixteen A. Minus one times three A is minus three A. And minus one times minus four is plus four. Don't bring the two in yet. You can go down to parentheses now. 12a squared minus 16a minus 3a is minus 19a plus 4. Now I distribute 2 to every term. 24a squared minus 38a plus 8, and hopefully that is what we started out with, 24a squared minus 38a plus 8, 24a squared minus 38a plus 8. Yes, yes, yes. So that goes in the answer box. Yay! Yay! Hooray! 
but you almost let me forget it too. I could blame you instead of me. But face it, I've been doing this a long time. If I can forget my A, you, uh, my two, you can forget your two. So be careful. All right, now we're going to move on to something a lot easier. Thank goodness. We are going to factor by the difference of squares, and here's the formula. If you have some number m raised to the second power, minus some number n raised to the second power, then that will equal m plus n times m minus n. And these, anything in this form is called conjugates. Conjugates are going to play a very important part in your life. OK, so consider this. We have W squared minus 6 squared. 36 is 6 squared. So W is acting like M and 6 is acting like N. And so this factors into W plus 6 times W minus 6. And we're done. You can check it. W times W minus 6 plus 6 times W minus 6 equals W squared minus 6W plus 6W minus 36. Six, negative 6W plus 6W is 0, so this is W squared plus 0 minus 36, which is W squared minus 36. Exactly what we started out with. Now here, look at that, both of these terms contain a, a, a five. B squared minus T squared. B is acting like M. T is acting like N. And five is stuck out front. So this is going to be five times B plus T times B minus T. Let's move on. Well, this isn't the difference of two squares. Oh, wait a minute. Both of these terms contain a C. C times 4C squared minus 9. C times 4C squared is 4C to the third. C times minus 9 is minus 9C. But how is that the difference of two squares? Just look. Four is a perfect square, two times two. 
C squared is a perfect square, C times C. So 4C squared is 2C in parentheses squared. 9 is 3 times 3, so minus 3 squared. So you've got 2C quantity squared minus 3 squared. 2C is acting like M. 3 is acting like N. So this is going to become C times 2C plus 3 times 2C minus 3. And we can factor that if you want. But I'm kind of thinking, I'm wondering what this problem holds for us. Let's see. Now, we don't have, four goes into these three terms, but not into that. B goes into these three terms, but not into that. So we don't have a GCF for all four terms. So we are going to rewrite this, B to the third minus four B squared plus negative 4b plus 16. We're going to factor by grouping. This is b times b times b. This is b times b. Both of these terms contain b squared. So b squared times b minus 4 plus 16, positive 16 is negative 4 times negative 4. So each of these terms contains a negative 4. Times B plus a negative four, so minus four. Okay. Now notice, woohoo, I love it, that B minus four matches B minus four. B minus four is our GCF. And our leftovers are B squared minus four, plus a, minus, plus a negative four is minus four. Oh, but hold it. Four, equals two times two. So this is B minus four times B squared minus two squared. We can factor this by the difference of two squares. So our answer will be B minus four and this factors, well, actually, I should probably do it right underneath, shouldn't I? B minus four times B plus two times B minus two. One more. <sighs> okay. 
Have we done that problem before? No, but 225 appeared before. All right, W to the third power cubed. Anything to the third power is called cubed. So the degree of this polynomial is three, which means it's a cubic. You'll hear more about that. 25 W squared plus negative nine W plus 225. Okay. Well, each of these terms contains W times W, so W squared will be the GCF for the first term, leaving us with W minus 25 plus Negative nine, you know what that means. Plus 225. Let's pull out the calculator. Two twenty-five. I know I can divide by five. That's forty-five, and nine goes into forty-five. Why would I care? because I've got a nine here, a negative nine. So let's clear that and go back to 225 divided by nine is 25. What do you know? All right, positive 225 is negative nine times negative 25. Both of these terms, this and this, contain a negative nine. So this is going to be W squared times W minus 25 plus negative nine. Did I say they both contain a negative nine? Yes, they do. Times Oops. Yes, okay, there it is. I just covered it up. Negative nine times W plus a negative 25 is minus 25. So W minus 25 is the GCF of this expression this polynomial. Times W squared plus a negative nine is minus nine. And we know that nine is three squared. So this is going to be W minus 25 times W squared minus three squared. So our answer, our, our um, factorization is going to be W minus 25 times W plus three times W minus three. And that is our answer. And we have done some pretty hardcore factoring. But don't worry, you're going to get to do a lot more. I promise. And in college algebra, even more. So learn it now. Talk to you later. Bye.